Hello, friends. Oh, man. The past two months have been, it's not eventful, it's just been a lot. In this video, I'm going to go over what it's really been like in the first trimester trying to have a fit pregnancy. If you don't follow me already, I'm Caroline D. Mesquita. This channel, I do a lot of information for women's health, fitness, and overall well being. And now on my pregnancy journey, this is my first child, and I wasn't really sure what to expect. I'd heard a lot of things about the first trimester your energy's gonna be low, you're gonna be eating everything. From there, I was like, oh, I'm gonna just let everything unfold and let life happen because no pregnancy is the same, just like no one's health journey is the same. So, in this video, I'm gonna be going over what my symptoms have been like, what my fitness routine has looked like, my nutrition, and also the reality and the truth behind how I have felt around my pregnancy. When we found out we were pregnant, I decided I didn't want to publicly announce it. The first trimester is the most risky when it comes to having a miscarriage. And in today's society, because of stress and the day-to-day -day life, it's actually a one in three chance that a woman can have a miscarriage. I did not want to put emotions around that and publicly saying that I'm pregnant until we get the first ultrasound after the first trimester when the risk is much lower for a miscarriage. So that being said, I've kind of kept it to myself, which if you guys know me personally, that's actually really difficult for me to do. I'm an introvert, but I like to share news with my close friends and family and really confide in them. We had some travel, work stuff. Overall, I did not have really bad morning sickness. It would happen in spurts, and it was usually after first meal. And that's when I actually paired together. I was getting nausea, mostly if I took my prenatal before eating. So, lesson learned. I only take it after a meal now, like immediately after with some water. And my morning sickness has subsided tremendously. When we were traveling for vacation, I actually, growing up, I would get car sick if we were doing like long road trips or I was sitting in the back seat. That happened when we went to Tulum because we were in a vehicle for a few days when we were traveling from the airport and back. That was a two hour drive. We went to Chichen Itza. That was another hour and a half drive in the vehicle. So I was doing the best I could. The best things that I've learned to use for my morning sickness and nausea are ginger in various forms, as well as vitamin B6. That was one symptom. And I'm really grateful that I haven't been puking. However, I also have been having extreme insomnia. So I think that's part of why I've just been tired all the time. And having this extreme fatigue is because my sleep has been very disrupted. I will be going over in another video the supplements that are safe and not safe during pregnancy. But essentially I had to remove almost all of my sleep supplements because according to scientific data, there's not enough research evidence proving that there could be no potential harm to the fetus. So the only thing I'm doing before bed right now is magnesium L-thornate from Symbiotica. I still am not sleeping well through the night. I can get seven to eight hours, but I don't wake up feeling refreshed. And the other thing that's been really hard is my caffeine. I miss you, caffeine. My caffeine intake, I've had to reduce down tremendously. You can have up to 200 milligrams in a day, but for me, I try to limit to no more than one cup of coffee or a latte. That is something I'm really, really having a hard time with because for me, my productivity is king. So I try to pair my coffee around like a busy work day or if I'm going to work out so that I can utilize that energy burst when I get it. I usually have to take an afternoon nap for at least 30 to 40 minutes. And that's been a daily thing for the past 11 weeks. Along with that fatigue, I have had extreme training fatigue. And you guys, coming from a competitive athlete lifestyle, not being able to train is like taking away a part of your person. And it's been really, really hard. But I'm really trying to focus in on making my body feel good, remembering I am strong, also giving myself grace. So recently I've only been doing two weight sessions per week, typically a leg day and an upper body day. And I actually been starting to work out at home with some baby weights that we have in our garage. We are gonna be building out a garage gym. That's a new um, focus point for us for this quarter. So I'm really excited to start that and we'll be sharing a little bit of that journey on mine and David's channel. Yoga, I've been trying to do one to two classes a week as well and just daily walking, trying to keep my steps up, stay active. I do notice some lower back pain, hip pain, if I don't. So that's definitely been important for me. Like I mentioned before, 
My supplements I have kept very minimal now and we'll be talking more specifically in a video on what I'm taking when I'm taking them, but that has been a big change. My nutrition as a whole is not that I'm not following a diet. I am very aware that tracking macros for me is not working at the moment. So I am eating pretty balanced foods, cooking stuff at home, ordering stuff from Grubhub if I need to, and honestly, I'm eating some packaged foods like chips. Salt has been my friend. I'm not having any extreme cravings, but that crunch of a chip, oh, too good. I have been leaning into that a little bit, and honestly, I go through bouts of I'm full to I'm ravishing. Like I can't eat enough food and feel, feel full. So I'm really trying to balance that. And because I know I'm not as active, I'm definitely eating in a surplus at the moment. I am not tracking my weight every day because I don't want to focus on that, but more so like, do I feel bloated? Am I having bowel movements? Stuff like that. Early on, I did have some issues with constipation, but I was able to figure that out. I did have some hemorrhaging or bleeding in my stool once again. I switched around some of my carb sources, doing a little bit more fruits and doing greens juice. That's been helping a lot to help me stay consistent with my bowels. Overall, that's kind of like the big picture of what my symptoms have been. From an emotional standpoint, I feel very level-headed and grounded, but then I will go through these bouts of body dysmorphia, questioning if I'm actually pregnant, questioning what my body is doing and like how to show up for myself. And honestly, I feel like that's why I haven't been on social media very much because I'm trying to really process where I'm at, what I need, and I don't want to speak too early on something when I'm still going through it. And that's something I've actually learned over the years is rather than putting something out on the internet immediately as I'm going through it, I really try to be present with what I'm going through, process, and reflect on is this going to benefit my followers? Is this actually bringing value to someone? Or do I need to keep learning a little bit more and see where it fits into my journey? So I am excited to share a little bit more about what's been going on, what I'm experiencing, and can't wait to have you guys a part of the journey. If you've had an interesting pregnancy experience, comment down below. I want to help more women out there. So let's collaborate together and share more experiences so that other women feel supported and loved during their first pregnancy.